Hey, how's it going folks? My name is Hellbent and welcome to Auto Hotkey Functions tutorial number I don't know what, uh, whatever it says in the video title. Um, so let's jump into this. We're going to make this a quick video. I don't have a lot of time today, so the we're going to look at three different things. The first thing we're going to look at is setting up a function definition that so that way it has default values. Um, I'm going to use a very simple example and then you can take this example and expand it to whatever you need to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up my script with if I can type today. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to create what in this first example what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a, a simple function that all it's going to do is it's going to take two 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 arguments and then it's going to add them together and return whatever the, their their value is. So I'm going to call this function I'm going to call it add And I'm just going to return the value of, I'm going to pass it to in here, I'm going to set it so that way it's A and B. So it's going to return A plus B, and here I'm going to set the arguments A and B. Okay, so it's so I have this function here that is expecting two arguments to be passed to it, and then it's going to add those together and return that. Up here I'm going to create a um, variable, I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to just going to call it variable. And I'm going to set it to the B. I'm going to say it equals the returned value of our add function. And the things I'm going to pass to it are a, let's say, a 5 and a 2. And then, you know what, I don't want to type out this too many times, so I'm just going to change that to var. And then I'm going to put this into a message box. And we're going to display var. Okay, so I have a simple, a very simple function. I'm passing it to two arguments. It's going to add those together and return that value. Okay, well, what if I want this addition function to be a little bit more robust and have be able to do a little bit more than that? So, well, let's say sometimes I only want to pass it two two arguments, but let's say other times maybe I want to pass it up to five arguments. What I can do is I can do, I can set this to a, b, c, d and E and then return A plus B plus C plus D plus E and then in here I can just say I pass it a 0, a 0, a 0. So right I can do this no problem right but this is get this gets really annoying really quickly if I have to pass it these blank arguments that I don't really actually want like I'm not trying to add any numbers with these right so what I can do instead is in my in my um definition for my function, what I can do is I can actually set it so that way it has default values for certain things. So since this is an addition function, right, obviously I'm going to have to pass it two arguments at least, right? I can't add just one number by itself. So I need, I know I need, in this case, I need at least two of the arguments to be always passed. So I don't need the first two arguments to be set with a default value, but all the other ones I can set them so that way they do have a default value. And the way we do that is in our definition, all we have to do is the things that we want to have a, have a default value, we can just set them like this, colon equals zero, colon equals zero. So now in my function rather if I'm trying to only add up two numbers together rather than passing all five arguments to it instead now I can just pass it two arguments and it's still gonna work just fine because if I don't pass it the third argument it's gonna set it to a default value if I don't pass it the fourth argument it's gonna set it to a default value and etc etc. Right? So it's still our my function still works and if I want to add a number, another number it's going to work no problem. If I want to add another one, it's going to work no problem up to the fifth argument. <clears throat> okay. Before we move forward, there's something that you that's important about this making uh, setting our definition with default values, and that is the first. I can have as many of these arguments have a default value as I want, but they they have to start from the right hand side so for example if I only want to have two arguments have a default value I can't do this I can't do that this is going to give me an error right 
what in this case what I would have to do is I would have to move the C argument over and put it over in this spot and the D would get shipped down. So the as soon as I the first time that I use an argument that has a default value, everything else if I want to have more values, they also have to have a default value. So starting from the right hand side, I have to pass them over this way. Uh have to have defaults. C D. And just to show you what I what I'm talking about, let's uh let's not have this one. Let's not have that one have an argument. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the third. So I'm not gonna pass an argument for the third one, the fourth one, I'm not gonna pass anything. I just want the fifth. Uh no, actually I want the this one. So <clears throat> I've passed it the argument for A, the argument for B. I haven't passed an argument for C, but it has a default value. Then I've passed it an argument for D, and I've passed it an argument for E. Even though I've done all of this, I'm going to get an error because my the things that I have set for as a default, they're not all on the right-hand side. So even though this should work, theoretically should work, it's not. It's going to give me a default a parameter default required. So if I want to have, as soon as I have my first default, if I have any other things after it, it also they all also have to have defaults. Okay, so that's this is very simple. Add. What if I want to create something that's a little bit more robust? So here's here's an example. It's I mean you're probably not going to use this in a script, but create a function like this. But you could maybe you could, right? So instead of having an add function, what we're going to do is we're going to create a math function. The name of it is irrelevant. I can call the function Bob if I want. And what we're going to do in this this time is we're going to have it set up so that way we pass it up to three arguments. The first two arguments are the numbers that we want to do a mathematical operation on, and then the third parameter, a third optional parameter, is what type of operation are we going to be doing on it. So let's go with a two and five. So these are the numbers that I want to do a mathematical operation on it. On, and then if I add a third parameter, it'll be what that operation is. So in our definition for our, our function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a and b, and then for the third parameter, c, I'm going to set it to have a default value of, let's say, a string. I'm going to use a string, and I'm going to set it to have a default value of plus. Inside of my function now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test to see what the value of C is. So I'm going to say if C equals oops equals plus, what I want to do is I want to the, my function to return the value of A plus B. I'll copy this because I'm a slow typer, as you can see, and I'll say else if else if c equals minus so our so now we have two things that our function can do we'll return a minus b i'll copy that else if c equals a asterisk what we want to do is return a times b and last we'll do if c is a slash we'll return a divided by b Okay, so here we have the function all set up, no problem. In our case here, we haven't decided to pass it a third argument. So what it's going to do is it's going to use, because C is set up so that way if we don't pass an argument to it, it's automatically going to assign it a value. If we don't add anything here, it's just going to add. So we get 7. But if we want the, our math, math function to do something else, we can pass it a third argument, let's say minus. So now we'll get 5 minus 2, which will give us a value of 3. If we want it to do a multiply, we can pass it that, and likewise with divide. No problem. Everything's... What if perhaps, perhaps um, our math function, we don't want it to do we don't want the default to be add we can set it to any of the other things that we don't that we uh perhaps want um 
Maybe, maybe most of the time we do division with our math function, right? So we can set divide to be the default so that way we don't have to, if we're using this all the time, we don't have to pass it that third argument saying that we're dividing because we use that all the time. Okay, so that's setting up a default. The next thing we're going to look at is condensing our code a little bit to make this a little bit more, a little bit less cluttered, easier to read. So in this in this program right now, all we're doing is our whole program is taking this variable var and setting it to be the value that we get returned from calling our math function. Well, and then putting it into a message box. That's our whole entire program. So what we can actually do is we can get rid of that whole variable var because we don't need it. I mean, it's just being used to display inside of our message box. So what we can do instead is we can actually just take this and just put our, our function inside of our message box. And we're still going to get the exact same answer, except now we've gotten rid of that variable var because we didn't need it. We didn't really need it. Right, and we still get the exact same answer of 5 divided by 2, or 5 plus 2, right, et cetera, et cetera. So this is another way that we can use. We can put a function call inside of a message box. Um, the last thing we'll look at is taking this one step further, and that is actually making function calls inside of a if statement. So we can say... Normally, we would have something like, um, let me set this back up, var colon equals math, and we'll pass it uh, 5 and a 2. And then we'd say something like, if var equals, uh, no, let's do, let's set it up so that way it's, a, it's a actually, if var is less than 10. If var is less than 10, we'll just pop up a message box. It is else nope. And I'll comment this out. All right, so this is how you'd probably normally set something up like this. So we have, we're setting var to equal the return value from our function that's going to divide those two numbers together and we're going to test now to see if var is less if our return value is less than some specific value or greater than some specific value or equal some specific value if that's true we're going to do some things if it's not true we're going to do something else etc cetera, etc cetera. so right so in our case var was less than 10 so we executed the code in here well, what we can do instead is we can, instead of having this var less than 10, we can get, once again, we can just get rid of that and we can just pass this, we can do our function call inside of our if statement instead. So if math, if math is 2 divided by, I mean 5 divided by 2 is less than 10, give us our, do our execute our code here. It is. What we can also do is, let's say we did actually want, for some whatever reason, we actually did want to set a value to our var variable. What we can do is, we can we have two options here. One is, we can set the value of whatever, whatever this, so our if statement here, it's going to evaluate this. And if, if this statement here, if this statement is here is, is true, it's going to put, it's going to uh, return a value of one. It's going to return a value of one. So, <clears throat> so if it's true, it goes, does its thing. It if it returns one, execute the code. If it returns a zero, which means our statement is false, don't do that thing, right? So it's a one or a zero. What we can do is we can actually set so that way we can dump the how this how this statement evaluated into a variable. So we can say var is equal to the statement is math, the return of our math function less than 10. So if, if this evaluates to being true, a true statement, var will have a value of 1. If this evaluates to false, var would have a value of 0. So let's, let's just uh, set it up so that way 
either way we're going to see what the value of var is just to show you what I'm talking about so either way we're going to display the value of var so we don't really actually care which which of these message box get played so in the first case it's going to be this first message box because this is a true statement the return value of 5 uh, divided by 2 is less than 10 so it's going to display this one so we're going to get a 1 but afterwards we're going to change it so that way our return this statement is going to be false whatever statement we put in here is going to be false which will set a value of 0 into our var variable so we have this statement right here math the return of math is less than 10 that is true var equals 1 now we're going to set it is it greater than is it greater than 10 so now this is a, a false statement this is going to evaluate to being false so it's going to put a value of 0 into our var variable okay what if I don't care about whether I don't care about the value of whether this statement is true or false what if instead what I actually want is I want to have it kind of like I have up here where I want to actually put into the variable var the value that I get returned from my math function right because before I would have to do something like this right but I can get rid of this whole line of code here and I can set in here I can say var colon equals math but like I said before this is actually just going to give us the whether this evaluates to being true or false if I want to actually hold the value of our math the return from our math I just put both of those things inside of parentheses so var colon equals our math function and now instead of var equaling a 1 or a 0 it's actually going to equal whatever we return from our math function which is 2.5 Okay, so that is it. I think that covers everything for this tutorial. I'll probably be back on functions sometime down the road. If you have anything else that you'd like to know about functions, leave a comment down below. Anyways, have a good day. Peace.